When we're teaching English, uh, especially with new students uh, in an unfamiliar environment, it's important to be flexible. Um, and so a lot of the times uh, the student will be at a beginning level. Um, but here are some tips for how to teach um, Chinese students the English language. Um, so first of all, especially with the beginner level, we want to focus on yes or no questions. Um, I know that your first instinct is going to want to be to ask like what, when, where, um, sort of like follow-up questions. But ideally, asking yes or no questions is a good place to start. So for example, if we look at this topic, we have time for gifts. And the first question is a yes or no question. So the first question is, do your friends give gifts on your birthday? Now that is a simple yes they do or no they don't question. But if you're just going to ask yes or no questions, it can be kind of boring. Um, so try to get into a pattern of asking yes or no questions. So I can ask these questions, do your friends give you gifts on your birthday, right? And then the next question I could ask is, do you receive a lot of gifts or maybe one gift? Um, and if the student is doing well with that, if the student is understanding the yes or no questions, you can certainly go ahead and ask um, like a what. So I could say, what presents do you get? Or what is your favorite present? or how many presents do you get? And just kind of feel out the student. If they are understanding the what and the how and the when questions, then continue doing that. But um, we want to start with the yes or no questions first. Um, like I said before, rephrasing the question is always a good idea um, if the student is struggling with the question that is initially prompted. Um, what we also want to do is we want to encourage the student to speak a lot. So like I said, starting with the yes or no questions is an easy way to get the student feeling good. Answering yes or no is very easy, build up their confidence. Um, and so here at Boxfish, we want to encourage you to help the student speak. And so to do that, we want to reduce our um, amount of correcting the student. Um, I know that their English might not be perfect, and so you initially might want to say like, oh, no, we want to say this instead of this. Um, but here we just want to focus on output. So even if a student is saying a sentence incorrectly, the most important thing is making sure that they're speaking. So we want to focus on 10% correcting. If there's a big mistake, then yeah, for sure, go ahead and make sure that they're saying it correctly or pronunciating it correctly. But for the most part, um, if the student is speaking, that is the end result. Um, so a lot of the times the students will be kind of confused about some things. And so like if we take a look at, um, when is Christmas? Right? And uh, Christmas might not be a big holiday in China, so they might not know. So I can give um, some clues to help them with that. So I can say it is October 1st, Christmas. Now October 1st is a national day for China, so obviously they'll know that October 1st is not Christmas. Um, we can also look at other holidays in China. Uh, for example, like a spring festival would be around February, March. And so we can say is Christmas in February or March? And obviously it won't be. Um, so that will kind of get them going of understanding when Christmas might be. Another thing to do is we can give our own examples. So if we look at this question, where do we put Christmas presents? Now I can suggest, do we put Christmas presents in the bed? And they'll say, no, obviously not. And so I can give another example of, oh, I put Christmas presents in the bathroom and they'll understand that no. And so they'll understand that I'm making a joke and the environment is more comfortable for them. And then ideally they would say, we put Christmas presents underneath the tree. Like I said, time control, each class, each unit will be 25 to 30 minutes. So if you're sort of running out of time, it's okay to skip certain things. So for example, if a student really doesn't know when Christmas is, it's okay to just give them the answer, December 25th, and move on. Um, so each section, as you can see, will have about 25 different slides. Um, so roughly maybe a minute a slide. Obviously, some questions will be easier than others, so those will go faster. So a follow-up question could be, Maybe, do you receive many gifts? Do you receive one gift? And then if they're understanding the yes or no questions, it's okay to move on to what gifts do you receive? Or how often do you receive these gifts? It all depends on you. So when we're teaching, uh, it's very important that we give positive reinforcement. Um, so when a student gets an answer correct or they give a good example, it's okay to be like, good, great, awesome. Um, that will really help them feel more comfortable, not only with you, but also with their English ability uh, moving forward in the future.